So leading into the New England championships that hopefully I'm beginning to fight in this weekend, the 23rd, uh, my wife and I thought it would be really cool to kind of just catch you up on my boxing history. We've got some tape from previous fights I had when I was a lot worse and rawer than I am now. We're gonna show some of that footage to you. I'm gonna try to have a little bit of humility here. Well, you guys look at uh, where I was when I was still growing and developing to kind of get where I am. Uh, and I'm just gonna talk you through my training history, uh, what got me into the sport, what I thought about the sport at different moments, and what eventually got me to a position where I'm a dude with a YouTube channel trying to teach you guys how to box and hunting for 100 fights. Let's go. My first exposure to boxing uh, was when I was a young man in 1996. Uh, my dad, living out in Iowa, uh, invited a bunch of his buddies over to watch the first Mike Tyson versus a Vander Holyfield fight. And I remember my dad talking up Tyson so much, talking about how he was a destroyer and he was so strong and how he was gonna walk over Holyfield and Holyfield was too small and too weak coming up from uh, light heavyweight. And then I remember just being astonished as a kid watching Holyfield in his purple shorts with those big muscles, just absolutely dismantling this fighter that my dad said was the best in the world, that my dad said was a world beater. You know, I remember looking at him, I can see like the snapshot in my mind of just like his back when they were in exchanges throwing punches. And I remember as a little kid just thinking it was impossible for a human to look like that, to be that strong, you know? And uh, I fell in love with boxing right then. I didn't know where it would take me, but that was my first exposure to the sport. This obviously bled over into school. Uh, I was always bugging my dad to teach me about boxing and teach me about fighting. And of course, he's like every Italian dad, you know, he's got all these stories about growing up and fighting in New York and uh, and in school. So, you know, I'm a little kid and I'm doing the exact same thing. You know, I'm in school and I'm always in detention because I'm picking fights and uh, and uh, I'm growing up out in Iowa and everybody out there is scrappy. The Midwest is a different place compared to the East Coast where I am now. You know, we spent all of our time as kids and teenagers, we're fighting in garages and we're fighting in backyards and we've got like jeans and Walmart gloves and no mouth guards on. Like, I remember how mad my parents were every time I'd come home with like a black eye or a bloody nose. And I remember them um, telling me that I shouldn't do that, how dangerous it was. And like in hindsight now as an adult with a mostly functioning brain, uh, it's amazing that I didn't get more hurt when I was doing that, but I managed to get through it. You know, that was my like crucible. It's just like anybody, any of your peers that was willing to put on those gloves and was willing to move around with you, like that person was your best friend because they gave you an opportunity to like test your mettle, to, to show your manhood, to show what you were made of. Something I say a lot to uh, a lot of my athletes and a lot of folks when they ask like, oh, why would you fight? Why would you box? Is I tell them that like, especially when you're a young man, you don't have any money, you don't have a, a, a hot wife or a sports car or anything that you can flex with. The only thing you have is your reputation. It's your toughness, it's your gameness, it's your ability to prove and show to people that I might not have those things now, but I'm tough and I'm game and I will have those things later because I don't have any quit in me. You know, young men, young folks, they deal in this currency, in this reputation, in this respect. Uh, and that really spoke to me when I was a kid. I had a bunch of junior fights when I was younger, and eventually I ended up at a place where, you know, you wanna be the baddest, you wanna be the toughest, you know, you wanna prove, you know, when you're a little boxer and all the wrestlers out in Iowa who are very, very, very good say that, you know, they'd take you down and they'd beat you up, you wanna learn that. So I took a little hiatus away from boxing for a while and I focused on doing Muay Thai kickboxing and I focused on some wrestling and some jujitsu. I snuck a couple kickboxing fights and a couple MMA fights in there um, before eventually I just ended up in a place 
where I realized that if I really wanted to get good at the boxing, I had to focus on the boxing. I had fun learning some leg kicks and learning some takedowns and submissions and all of that stuff. You know, when I was in college, uh, I ran a martial arts club. Uh, we did a lot of MMA stuff and I even had a couple of like dojo stormers there, people that would come in and they'd say, oh, my ax kung fu is better than your tiger style and we'd scrap it out. Uh, so I got some bare knuckle fights from back then, but eventually I realized that that just wasn't for me. It wasn't where I started and it wasn't what I loved and I eventually circled back around to the boxing. So of course, when I graduated from college, I immediately threw myself back into the boxing and I had met my wonderful wife, Lee, who's filming this right now and does all of my editing and directing and makes all the thumbnails. This channel wouldn't exist without her. I'd be too busy to do any of these things. And we got back into competing in boxing. Um, I had a couple fights, but I mean, at this point, I was really self-taught. You know, I was, a, I was a good athlete that kept stumbling into a boxing ring, basically. Like, I knew it was something that I loved, but I didn't have any really knowledgeable role models around me to teach it to me, you know? So, you know, I was very strong and very fast and very aggressive, and I was a true believer. I was in shape, but I didn't know how to move my head you know, I didn't know how to control the ring. You know, I just knew how to chase a guy down and swing at him. Uh, and I did that for a couple years and I took a lot of damage doing it, you know. Um, I remember fighting Jaquan Wilder and in the span of a six minute fight, a novice fight, uh, he broke my nose, he broke my orbital bone, my nasal bridge, he herniated two discs in my neck and he gave me a concussion in a fight that I won but like, I just didn't know how to get out of the way. My head was a fist magnet, you know? So that's what I would do. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't have as many fights as I should is for years, I'd fight like twice a year. Is I'd fight and, I, and I'd do fairly well, you know, but I'd take a lot of damage when I was in there and then I'd have to rest and recover. And then I'd fight and I'd take a lot of damage and I'd have to rest and recover. It took me a long time um, in between fights just to nurse myself back to health to do it all over again. Uh, eventually, my wonderful wife got a job that made her move to New York and I moved to New York with her and this was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I ended up meeting a Hall of Fame coach, cornerman, and cut man, Bob Miller. Bob Miller is from the old school. He opened up his first gym in New York in 1969. He'd been doing this for years. And at this point, you know, he was retired, but he ran a private pros camp in upstate New York. So I ended up rubbing shoulders with him. He found out that I had a degree in exercise science uh, and he hired me on as the head strength and conditioning coach at his pros camp. And this was a wake up call. Uh, I didn't have a bad record at this point. I I'm trying to remember. I think I was like 11 and three or something like that. Um, but man, my first six months at the pros camp was just me getting absolutely shit kicked by everybody there. I was getting beat up by 125 pound women. I was getting beat up by 12 year old kids. Uh, and it hurt my feelings because, you know, I was a better athlete than almost everybody there. You know, I always tell people, uh, I had a over 500 pound deadlift. I had an over 50 inch box jump. I had a sub five minute mile and I am just getting soundly outboxed by people who are worse athletes than me. And I had this come to Jesus moment. I remember driving home just like in tears. I'd, I'd been going for like two weeks, just getting beat up every single sparring session. And I had to think, I was like, I've been doing this thing for like, 10 years, maybe 12 years now, depending on if you consider taking it seriously or not. And um, have I put this much time and energy into this thing to not be good at it, you know? And I said, you know what? I did put this much time and energy into this thing to not be good at it, but I'm gonna get good, you know? So I refocused and I started thinking about boxing as a skill sport instead of thinking about it like an attribute sport. It's not about being stronger. It's not about being faster. It's about being a better boxer to me. This was evident in every single experience I had with all of the wonderful and talented athletes at this camp that I needed to improve my boxing skill. And thank God Bob Miller was there with all of his knowledge to take me under his wing and to educate me and to teach me 
about lane theory and positioning and punch selection, about pressure, about how to slow things down and speed things up. Um, if it wasn't for him, uh, I don't know where I'd be. You know, God bless the man. Uh, he passed away a couple years ago, I think in 2021. And man, I wish I could have picked his brain for 10 more years. Um, but we try to carry on that legacy. We try to carry on the knowledge and the experience that you know uh, he taught to his athletes, uh, to a whole new generation. So when I was at Bob's camp, I had several fights. And if you look at them, I'm sure my wife's gonna edit them in right here. You can see that I've been formally educated, but I'm not quite good enough to be able to do it at fight pace yet. I understand how to get myself to different positions. I understand the theory of all of this, um, but I don't know how to bring my base with me. I don't know how to keep my posture, you know, and I, I just don't quite have the confidence and the reps in yet to really put this all together. So I had a couple fights in 2016 where my power and my athleticism kind of bailed me out. Then I had another classic throwback Anthony fight where I won my Metro Adirondack title, but I got my whole face caved in doing so. Yeah. Um, I had to have full reconstructive surgery on my face. And I had to think. I said, I know a lot, but I don't have any experience doing these things. So I'm gonna take a hiatus. So I had an opportunity to move back to Vermont to buy into Combat Fitness, which is the gym that I own now. And I had an opportunity to step aside, uh, step out of the spotlight as an athlete and to coach. So I started coaching here. And for six or seven years, that's all I was doing. I wasn't competing, I was coaching, and I was learning, and I was trying to understand the system, and I was watching tape, and I was dealing with other athletes' problems, and I was learning as I sparred with the team and sparred with my athletes, not to problem solve with speed, power, and aggression, but to try to problem solve with knowledge. Try to win fights with your skill instead of just with your physicality. And you folks have been here for the journey of me coming back to the ring. Uh, I have grown the boxing program uh, out of combat fitness. When I first came here, there were only six people involved in the program. Uh, now we have over 60 athletes in the program. We clean swept Tri-State Golden Gloves uh, with all four of our athletes that participated this past January, February. And I think that the team's getting to a place where I have some co-coaches, I have some other experienced athletes here, and it has a little bit of autonomy. So I thought now was the perfect time for me to come back and to test the system. Uh, I've always, throughout all of those years that I wasn't competing, I was traveling and I'm sparring with these guys who are multiple time national champions. These guys who have tried out for the Olympic team. These guys who have successfully gone pro or have even been title holding professionals. And I can spar really competitively with them. So everybody knows that fighting is not sparring. Sparring is not fighting. So uh, we got back in there and you can see it was shaky getting started. My first fight back was the Capone fight in Albany this past summer, and I had to shake off a bunch of rust and a bunch of coaching psychology that I was struggling with, where I went into that fight and I treated him like he was one of my athletes, and at the end of it, they gave him the decision. And when you go through and you score that fight, I hit him almost four to one as many times as he hit me but they didn't give me the decision. And they shouldn't have given me the decision. This is something I wanna, I wanna redact in my history. You know, when I released my footage 
of that fight and I scored it. I was like, if you look at this, the judges got this wrong. And you know, if we're talking about just clean, flush hits to scoring zones, if we're boiling boxing down to a game of tag, they did get it wrong. But that's not what boxing is. That's the same thing that I'm always pushing back on with boxing. I hate when people treat the martial art of boxing, which should be a damage and not get damaged system. I hate when they try to turn that into a game of tag, when they try to make it sporty. And that's exactly what I was doing, you know? I was there mad that I didn't win the sport. When in reality, I should have been trying to hurt him. I should have been trying to damage him. I should have been putting the pressure on him. And it shouldn't matter what the judges are looking at. It shouldn't matter what the scoring criteria are. I should take accountability for anybody who looks at that fight saying, that guy whooped the other guy's ass. They shouldn't have to look at it and be like, oh, well, if you look at my clickers here, this guy hit more than this guy. That's silly. That's not applicable to the real world. And you can see that we made those adjustments. I need to respect the sport and I need to respect my opponents enough that when I go out there, I'm trying to hurt them. That's the game plan. That's what boxing is as a martial art, not as a sport. So where does this put us now? All right, let's talk about where this YouTube channel is going and where my journey is going. A lot of coaches in city centers where they can get 100 fights, they want their guys to have the pedigree, 100 amateur fights before they go pro. For me, I don't have any intentions of going pro, but I do want the pedigree. I wanna get 100 amateur fights. I wanna be exposed to every style. I want to test my understanding of the sweet science in every single capacity. I wanna see tall fighters, small fighters, southpaws, orthodox. I wanna fight guys who are spoilers. I wanna fight guys who pressure. I wanna fight guys who run and tie up. You know, I wanna make my understanding of boxing as multifaceted and as deeply understood as I can, because that's what brings me enjoyment. I'm obsessed with it, and it also makes me a better coach, and it allows me to help my athletes out better. Whenever they ask me a question, I wanna have an answer. I wanna be able to tell them, not only do I know the answer to this, but I learned it the hard way. I've done it. It's not enough for me to say, oh, this is the theory of this thing. I wanna say, this is the theory of this thing, and this is how I applied it in a variety of situations. So I'm out here, I am testing the Bambera boxing system. I've got eight more years before they force me into the master's division. And in those eight years, I'd like to get my 100 fights and I wanna bring you folks along for the journey. When I go to the master's division, we'll see how my body's holding up after 100 fights worth of damage on it. And then my long-term goal, I'm on that Bernard Hopkins plan. I wanna be doing this until I'm 52. I wanna be the greatest master's division fighter anybody's ever heard of. You know, I'm playing the long game here. And I want you guys to join me for that. So something that you guys can do that'll help me out here is obviously like, subscribe, all that YouTuber nonsense. But we have recently started a Kofi account. Kofi is kind of like Patreon, and it's a way for you to support us a la carte. So whether you are looking for me to break down your fight footage or break down your sparring footage, or whether you're looking for me to use my expertise and my knowledge to build you a strength and conditioning program or a technical program to help you accomplish your boxing goals, or whether you're just looking to snag one of our pre-made programs about conditioning your legs for the sport or conditioning your jab for the sport, if you head over there, Bambera Boxing on Kofi, that's the best way for you to support us. Other than that, come along for the ride. Uh, you can see me fight, and hopefully the lessons I learned will help you have success when you fight. Mm -hmm.